Before this video starts, I'd just like to make an announcement. I have the Liberal Tears mug uh, for $14.99 on my website. It is the first link in the description if you want to go pick one up. Um, don't worry if it breaks when it comes to your house. I'll send you another one for free out of my pocket. I don't care. I want you to get your Liberal Tear mug. Uh, it comes in uh, Liberal Tears white with the face, black with the face, white without the face, and black without the face. So pick whichever one you want, and it'll come to your door uh, in about three to five days. So that should be epic. First thing in the description, thank you. Like you, who are willing to call out the president face to face by name and saying this is not who we are as a nation. And I would say to you and to everybody like you, consider coming over. Well, let me ask no, you. We, me... we need to stay in the Republican well, Party. But because, you've already gone. But because I'm just people, no, actually, I was a Republican when the president knew support was a Democrat. Oh. And I was a Republican when the president knew support was an independent. If you're a Republican, so, I'm Luis Fonsi. Come maybe on, you are Luis like... Fonsi. You can start singing Despacito here. <laughs> but I am a Republican. I supported Ronald Reagan. I've supported every single Republican nominee and, for and president. And donated to every... I mean, so to has the president. Yeah, I supported to, Bob Menendez. To you know what? And so did Jared Kushner. So did Charlie Kushner. So did Donald Trump. Right. Okay. okay. So that doesn't bother you? No, it doesn't bother you. Do you know how to spell me. hypocrisy? Oh, or should goodness, I spell it goodness. out for I'm you? Just I'm just telling you that what all this charge yeah, of listen, racism against... Donald Trump supported Nancy Pelosi. Donald Trump had Hillary Clinton at his wedding. Donald Trump had Bill Clinton at his wedding. And you're going to accuse me? I'm just being telling you you don't represent the Republican view No, anymore. I don't. Re I, I, you proudly, for quite some time. I proudly do not represent the Trumpist view. And Donald Trump is not a Republican. Mm -hmm. Let me, let, me, let me ask another question about this. Uh, president. <clears throat> let me ask this question about uh, the Arpaio uh, uh, pardon, um, because people are looking at it, uh, Democrats and Republicans, and saying there's more to this than just an Arpaio uh, pardon. Uh, there's a guy uh, on the Internet uh, and has a blog, Don Serber. He's a big Trump supporter. Um, and he said that he sees this as a clear signal President Trump will pardon people uh, who might be prosecuted in the Mueller probe. He wrote, quote, the message of his pardon is Donald Trump has your back. No one will roll over on Trump to avoid Mueller's charges because people now know Trump can and will pardon them if they remain loyal. Now, I've heard Democrats say that, right. but hearing a Trump supporter say that uh, seemed uh, even more significant. I actually disagree with that. I think like this is a, Arpaio is a theatrical publicity seeking birther who gets himself into trouble and blames other people. I can't imagine why. Uh, he's standing behind him. Like, it's a personal affinity. It ticks off the right people that he pardons him. And look, he has the power to pardon him. Um, but there is a pile of ignominious pardons and clemencies. I think, you know, that Manning goes on that pile, Oscar Rivera Lopez goes on that pile, and perhaps this does, uh, particularly because, look, he is an avatar of toughness and law enforcement to some, but he also is, a, is an avatar for abuses of power and law, law enforcement and some of the worst excesses there. Um, there's an argument that perhaps some of this was politically motivated, the timing of it uh, going after him, uh, but this is... By the Obama administration. Right, right. But this is a guy who I think has gone too far in many cases. And by the way, was voted out in a Trump county in Arizona, 5644, which highlights some of the divisions we're seeing on this stage. And that's exactly what Trump likes to do. That's what he's a natural at. But to your, qu your question about whether this signals something, I mean, first of all, anybody who thinks that Donald Trump is loyal to anybody but himself only needs to talk to Steve Bannon, Rudy Giuliani, and Chris Christie. He is not going to be loyal to people. But second, there are a whole slew of state attorneys general out there who would be only too happy to pick up the thread if for some reason Donald Trump thinks <clears throat> it's a wise idea to prospectively pardon Flynn or Manafort, etc. This will not be over. And by the way, if he did pardon others like those guys, there is a, st uh, a congressional investigation that's happening where right now they have taken the fifth those particular witnesses if they're pardoned they won't be able to take the fifth and you better believe Congress will get them to come and testify. So Michael uh, Congressman Adam Schiff who's a ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee he tweeted a, a similar analysis our pile action was appalling and political it also sends a message to witnesses in Russia investigation to keep quiet stay loyal and get pardoned. Do you agree? No, of course. As somebody who's in that jackpot, I can tell you that if, if I had done something wrong, I wouldn't expect the president to pardon me. I don't expect him to pardon anybody else involved in this. But the bottom line is this. Representative Schiff is on top of nothing. The Russia investigation is going nowhere. And now they're focusing on financial crimes that allegedly happened long before Paul Manafort ever worked for Donald do Trump. Know? Long before. That's, I'm just it. looking at the same leaks you are, illegal leaks that are breaking the law every time they come out. Mm. The fact of the matter is, uh, this Arpaio, this Arpaio uh, uh, pardon doesn't send a message to me. It doesn't send a message to Paul Manafort. This is all chatter. This is all designed to, to, to distract people from the fact that the Democrats have got a big problem here. 
You guys have to come together and, and sell your progressive doctrine to the middle, to the independents, the Republicans. We have to expand our base, too. And instead of doing that, we're sitting around talking about Russia, 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 which is absolutely nothing. He's not going to pardon anybody involved in Russia because nothing happened. Anna? Yeah, in the meantime, Bob Mueller is uh, send, sending out subpoenas to uh, Paul Manafort's PR. And look, what is chatter which is everything with Trump. Which, which is, what is chatter is everything we're doing right now? Because what is happening is that Robert Mueller, while we are all talking about it, is focusing, is serious, is expanding his investigation, has hired a very professional team specializing in things like financial crimes, mm -hmm. like turning witnesses. So all of this noise around it, you saying that there's nothing, me saying there might be something, doesn't matter. The guy is focused. We don't. Well, the, truth is, the truth is we don't know. We also know um, that there was at least willingness uh, by Don Trump Jr., uh, and Manafort and Kushner to attend a meeting that was billed as a Russian government attorney uh, with dirt on Hillary Clinton. That's not who she was at the end of the day, but there was at least willingness, and we're told Mueller is also looking into that. So the truth is... You well, you mentioned Syrian refugees there. Uh, this is another thing that you've been tweeting about in the last few days, particularly after the Paris attacks. Uh, none of the arbiters of the Paris attacks are Syrian refugees. None of them are refugees at all. Three of them were born in Paris. Three of them are from Brussels. Um, why do you continue to perpetuate this idea that refugees have anything to do with the attacks? I don't perpetuate the idea. The point I'm making is that ISIS is very active in Syria. I ISIS controls Syrian towns. And so... Absolutely, and that's undisputed. Yeah. Undisputed, right. And now when you have a large influx of Syrians into Europe and into the United, the United States, it, if you were ISIS, wouldn't you think that this was a rather easy way to send ISIS guys into Europe and the United States? Wouldn't that be a, a convenient and natural thought to you if you were trying to figure out how to get, for example, an ISIS sympathizer to Chicago? Wouldn't you say, you know what, all these refugees are going anyway, 100,000 of them. Can they possibly vet them all? I mean, you try to vet the guys I went to high school with, try to figure out who their friends are. This is in Mumbai. You wouldn't be able to do it. It's impossible. So this is a wonderful opportunity for ISIS. We should be aware of that, and that simply means we need to, pr to do heightened scrutiny. We need to be really careful because we know that the enemy can easily get through our borders this way. Well, heightened security. So I understand in Europe, for example, they have the Schengen Agreement, which is basically an open border agreement. This is certainly something that both the French authorities, the authorities in Brussels, are going to be looking at a lot closely. They have said so in the last few days as well since the attacks, that they're going to be looking at intelligence sharing a little bit more. That all makes sense. With regards to the United States and refugees coming into the U.S., how do you see that there is the same kind of threat that could be in Europe as there is for refugees coming into the United States? See, I think when I look at the reaction to the Paris attacks, I'm not so much scared by ISIS as I am scared by the rather serene, almost whimsical, uh, almost annoyed and indifferent tone of Obama. Con contrast Obama with Hollande. So here's Hollande. He sounds like Churchill, right? He, these are barbarians. I'm going to be merciless. I'm going to wipe them off the face of the earth. Here's Obama. Well, that was kind of a setback. And now we have another apparently attempted bombing in Germany. I guess another averted setback. Well, these aren't just setbacks. A, a setback is when you, I mean, Obama says ISIS is contained. I guess very inconveniently the next day, the Paris attacks. So they're not contained. But how can an organization that is controlling towns in Afghanistan uh, and Syria, that is downing a Russian airliner, uh, that is causing havoc in France, how can that be considered a JV team? How can that be considered contained? Well, the, the, the JV comment, I think he's since clarified, and that notion of containment, um, you know, I'm not going to speak for the president, but he certainly has said that he clarified that he meant that physically they are still within the confines of Syria and Iraq, uh, and they're, they're not setting up cal mini caliphates in Paris, as an example. But to go back to my question, you didn't answer it, in terms of Syrian refugees coming to the United States, how can you see that they are posing any kind of actual serious threat when they're having have been no crimes committed by refugees. Germany put out a report that Germany that has taken over 100,000 refugees has said that their crime level hasn't increased once since they, uh, not even by one percentage point, since they introduced and allowed refugees into their country. 
Right, but remember that the whole point of terrorism is to do what hasn't been done before. Right, before 9-11, planes were never used to, to go into buildings. So if you had said, listen, what's wrong with giving Islamic radicals flight lessons because they've never flown planes into, planes into buildings? Yes, but that's, that, that's because that's the new idea that occurred to them. So I'm simply saying now, something that we would previously be naive about, refugees, they're running away from persecution. Uh, we ought to take them in with open arms. And I, all I'm saying is now we realize wait a minute, uh, uh, these refugees can be used as a way to smuggle bad guys into the United States. That to me sounds a bit like minority report politicking though. Well, I think to me it sounds exactly like reading common sense into the headlines. So uh, again... But the common sense I, I think is, is taking a huge leap from facts that are just not there uh, and then using these immaterial, non-existent facts to then craft policy. Let me ask you which this. It doesn't sound intelligent to me. If, if, if someone said to you, uh, here, is, here are the resources to cover the expense, would you take a dozen of these refugees into your house, knowing as little as we do about them, uh, and would you feel safe? But we do, um, we do know a lot about them, because the process to actually be a refugee in the United States can take anywhere from 12 to 18 months, the way that they're scrutinized. I mean, you, know, you said to yourself, you're an immigrant, I'm an immigrant, I have an accent, I'm here on a visa. The process for me to get any kind of visa is ridiculously inordinate. And I'm somebody who has, you know, presence on online, in, in but newspapers, we're not talking about all this. about that. No, I know. But we're, we're talking, we're, we're we're talking, talking about... You're saying, about how can you, you're saying how can you verify that this person, 12 people, 12 Syrians were to come into your house, how do you know that they're not anything dubious or criminal? Because the investigation and the background check that the Department of Homeland Security currently requires is around 18 months long. But the refugee process tends to circumvent those things. We're talking about it doesn't taking. Circumvent we're those talking things. about taking a hundred thousand people in a relatively short time. When when you're talking about no one's taking a hundred thousand. The president had mentioned ten thousand. Well, no, uh, t ten thousand maybe immediately. But the, the the numbers that have been talked about are much much larger than that. Europe is taking a lot, and we're taking a lot. Look, the French are now saying we need to reassess the process. We just need to look at it harder. I'm very pro-immigrant. I'm an immigrant, and I uh, my politics. Pro, are you pro-immigrant? Of course I am. My politics come out of that. This country was built by immigrants, and to me, the great power of conservatism, the reason I call myself a conservative, is I want a ladder of opportunity that I can climb up. I don't what do you think of the way that some of the 2016 candidates have been talking about immigrants? Uh, the you know, front runners, Ben Carson, Donald Trump, have been making some very disparaging remarks about immigrants. Do you think that they're the wrong people to be leading the charge for the Republicans for 2016? Well, first of all, I do think the Republican Party uh, should should not and cannot be the party against immigration, no. Uh, but I do think that there is a legitimate frustration with illegal immigration. Uh, no country can be a real country while having, in a sense, a, a completely porous border. If you go down to the border, as I did last year, you basically fence, you see fences that keep stopping, fences with huge holes in them so that you can actually drive a car through them. So this is a fraud. This is a, an attempt to say to the American people, we have a fence, but look, you can come right through right here. And there's no one to stop you if you do. So I don't know if that, I don't believe that that's true. I don't believe that, I mean, I've been down to Tijuana as well, and I think that if I try and get through the line with my passport, I'm going to be stopped by the police. No, don't be silly. There's We're not talking about going through the line. There's a, little, there's a little border post here, and then there are miles and miles of fence, and all I'm telling you is if you simply follow those fences, you will see the fence stops, and it literally becomes open country. You so can just walk across a, the border. I think there's a, there's a big difference between border security, which I think people on both sides agree is necessary. I mean, you know, we are a, a sovereign country, and of course there needs to be border security. We have security. laws. And we have laws, absolutely. But there is a big difference between that and then talking about whole people, as Donald Trump did, as rapists, as an example. Do you think that the front runners, Donald Trump and Ben Carson, are getting it wrong when it comes to immigration? Well, I think that, the, as I say, I think that they are reflecting a deep frustration about the fact that the United States, the federal government, the states are doing better, but the federal government refuses ultimately to maintain borders. Now, as someone who went through the legal process, as I assume you did, it took us a lot of time, and it also cost us a fair bit of money, uh, and we had to play by the rules, and we had to stand in line, and we did. So why would we condone, as immigrants, a process that allows other guys, just as in the same way as you're standing in the Starbucks line, some guy walks to the front, pushes everybody aside, orders a Starbucks, everyone in line is going to tell him to get out of the line. Get in line. That's all I'm saying. Hello, everyone. Hey, 
I'm just stopping by to remind you that liberals are insane. <laughs> Social justice warriors are becoming more violent and triggered than ever before. Anyways, be sure to subscribe to KGP TV on YouTube and have a blessed day. Yeah, man. idea to prospectively pardon Flynn or Manafort, etc. This will not be over. And by the way, if he did pardon others like those guys, there is a, st a, a congressional investigation that's happening where right now they have taken the fifth, those particular witnesses. If they're pardoned, they won't be able to take the fifth. And you better believe Congress will get them to come and testify. So, Michael, uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, who's a ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, he tweeted a, a similar analysis. Our PIO action was appalling and political. It also sends message to witnesses in Russian investigation to keep quiet, stay loyal, and get pardoned. Do you agree? No, of course. As somebody who's in that jackpot, I can tell you that if, if I had done something wrong, I wouldn't expect the president to pardon me. I don't expect him to pardon anybody else involved in this. But the bottom line is this. Representative Schiff is on top of nothing. The Russian investigation is going nowhere. And now they're focusing on financial crimes that allegedly happened long before Paul Manafort ever worked for Donald Trump. Know? Long before. That's, I mean, I'm just looking at the same leaks you are, illegal leaks that are breaking the law every time they come out. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is, uh, this Arpaio, this Arpaio uh, uh, pardon doesn't send a message to me. <clears throat> it doesn't send a message to Paul Manafort. This is all chatter. This is all... Before this video starts, I'd just like to make an announcement. I have the Liberal Tears mug uh, for $14.99 on my website. It is the first link in the description if you want to go pick one up. Um, don't worry if it breaks when it comes to your house. I'll send you another one for free out of my pocket. I don't care. I want you to get your Liberal Tear mug. Uh, it comes in uh, Liberal Tears white with the face, black with the face, white without the face, and black without the face. So pick whichever one you want, and it'll come to your door uh, in about three to five days. So that should be epic. First thing in the description, thank you. Like you, who are willing to call out the president face to face by name and saying this is not who we are as a nation. And I would say to you and to everybody like you, consider coming over. Let no, me ask you. No, we, me... we need to stay in the Republican <laughs> well, Party. But because, you've already gone. But I'm because just saying. People, no, actually, I was a Republican <laughs> when the president knew support was a Democrat. Oh. And I was a Republican <laughs> when the president knew support was an independent. If you're a Republican, so, I'm Luis Fonsi. Come maybe on, you are Luis like... Fonsi. You can start singing Despacito here. <laughs> but <laughs> I am a Republican. I supported Ronald Reagan. I've supported every single Republican nominee and, for and president. And donated to every... I mean, so to has Menendez, the president. Yeah, I supported to, Bob Menendez. To you know what? Schultz. So did Jared Kushner. So did Charlie Kushner. So did Donald Trump. Right. Okay. okay. Who gets himself into trouble and blames other people. I can't imagine why uh, he's standing behind him. Like, it's a personal affinity. It ticks off the right people that he pardons him. And look, he has the power to pardon him. Um, but there is a pile of ignominious pardons and clemencies. I think, you know, that Manning goes on that pile. Oscar Rivera Lopez goes on that pile. And perhaps this does. Uh, particularly because, look, he is an avatar of toughness and law enforcement to some. But he also is, a, is an avatar for abuses of power and law, law enforcement and some of the worst excesses there. Um, there's an argument that perhaps some of this was politically motivated, the timing of it uh, going after him. Uh, but this is By a, the Obama administration. Right, right. But this is a guy who I think has gone too far in many cases. And by the way, was voted out in a Trump county in Arizona, 5644, which highlights some of the divisions yeah. we're seeing on this stage. And that's exactly what Trump likes to do. That's what he's a natural at. But to your, your question about whether this signals something, I mean, first of all, anybody who thinks that Donald Trump is loyal to anybody but himself only needs to talk to Steve Bannon, Rudy Giuliani, and Chris Christie. He is not going to be loyal to people. But second, there are a whole slew of state attorneys general out there who would be only too happy to pick up the thread if for some reason Donald Trump thinks he's <coughs> wise. Designed to, to, to distract people from the fact that the Democrats have got a big problem here. You guys have to come together and, and sell your progressive doctrine to the middle, to the independents, the Republicans. We have to expand our base, too. And instead of doing that, we're sitting around talking about Russia, 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 which is absolutely nothing. He's not going to pardon anybody involved in Russia because nothing happened. Anna? Yeah, in the meantime, Bob Mueller is uh, send, sending out subpoenas to uh, Paul Manafort's PR. And look, what is chatter which has is everything. Which, which, which is, what is chatter is everything we're doing right now? Because what is happening is that Robert Mueller, while we are all talking about it, is focusing, is serious, is expanding his investigation, has hired a very professional team specializing in things like financial crimes, like turning witnesses. 
So all of this noise around it, you saying that there's nothing, me saying there might be something, doesn't matter. The guy is focused. We don't. We're well, the, truth the, is, the truth is we don't know. We also know um, that there was at least willingness uh, by Don Trump Jr. Uh, and Manafort and Kushner to attend a meeting that was billed as a Russian government attorney uh, with dirt on Hillary Clinton. That's not who she was at the end of the day, but there was at least willingness, and we're told. So that doesn't bother you? No, it doesn't. Do you know bother how to spell me. hypocrisy? Oh, or should goodness, I spell it out for I'm you? Just I'm just telling you that what all this charge yeah, of racism it. against. Donald Trump supported Nancy Pelosi. Donald Trump had Hillary Clinton at his wedding. Donald Trump had Bill Clinton at his wedding. And you're going to accuse me? I'm not just being telling you, you don't represent the Republican view. No, anymore. I don't. I, I, you proudly, have for quite some time. I proudly do not represent the Trumpist view. And Donald Trump is not a Republican. Mm -hmm. Let me let me let me ask another question about this. Uh, president. <clears throat> let me ask this question about uh, the Arpaio uh, uh, pardon, um, because people are looking at it, uh, Democrats and Republicans, and saying there's more to this than just an Arpaio uh, pardon. Uh, there's a guy uh, on the internet uh, and has a blog, Don Serber. He's a big Trump supporter, um, and he said that he sees this as a clear signal President Trump will pardon people uh, who might be prosecuted in the Mueller probe. He wrote, "Quote: The message of his pardon is Donald Trump has your back." No one will roll over on Trump to avoid Mueller's charges because people now know Trump can and will pardon them if they remain loyal. Now, I've heard Democrats say that, right. but hearing a Trump supporter say that uh, seemed uh, even more significant. I actually disagree with that. I think like, this is a, Arpaio is a theatrical publicity-seeking birther.